ci chiediamo nel, nel tuo lavoro con la, la Dania, eh, sei incappata nelle mafie indiane, sei incappata nella, diciamo, nella morsa della criminalità organizzata, hai avuto dei problemi eh, in India con la, la mafia locale? I think Tonio used a phrase, capitalist mafia. And while the mafia that grew out of Italy has its own very peculiar culture, uh, but the characteristics of stealing the resources of the people, terrorizing people, using threat, is something that the current model of the economy, which goes by the name of globalization or the neoliberal model, must by necessity create. I was once at a meeting with Gorbachev, who as you know had created Paris Troika. Yes. And, uh, and he was saying, I fought for the end of communism, thinking it would bring us democracy and markets. It brought us the mafia. This is a common expression. Brought us the mafia. Now, I have witnessed that wherever the resources of the people, which belong to the people, a peasant whose land is being grabbed, a tribal whose land is being grabbed for mining by mining companies, or peasants whose seed is being grabbed. You can only do this through institutionalizing a mafia group. My new book, which was actually first published in Italy and only now has come out in English called Making Peace with the Earth, talks about this in detail in various, uh, you know, various movements in which I'm involved. And you talked about how I am constantly talking about war in the titles of my book. You know, I feel deeply that to create peace you have to recognize when war is taking place. Because if you assume war is peace, then you won't create peace. If you assume the mafia rule is democracy, you won't work for democracy. of this new kind of corporate mafia, capitalist mafia. I was earlier talking about the seed. Now, at one level, if you don't relate the seed all the way back to the food and agriculture, you think, oh, you know, these are theoretical questions. But they're life and death questions. Not just the life and death of the seed, which is dead seed if it has terminated technology, but life and death of farmers. Now, 97-98, Monsanto entered India with GMOs, genetically modified cotton seeds. And it put huge ads about how they were going to be miracle seeds. I, of course, knew that they were violating our law, so I called up our Ministry of Environment, I called up our Ministry of Agriculture to check if they had been approved, and they hadn't been approved, so I took them to court, and they were stopped from introducing the GMC, but they already have the right through the World Trade Organization and the World Bank to start selling seeds and buying up Indian companies. Very, very rapidly, the situation today in India is this. India is a land where cotton evolved. We are the land of one species of cotton. We are the land where Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, spun freedom. He said, we will defeat the empire, not with guns. We will defeat the British empire by spinning our own cloth. Because they colonized us through cloth. They take our cotton and sell us finished textiles, 
they've totally destroyed our economy. And you might not know, but they had to do this through all kinds of coercive measures. One goes, of course, from Africa capturing people and making them slaves to work in the cotton plantations of the United States. In India, creating a slavery system for the cultivation of indigo, and I kept thinking of indigo <laughs> as I looked at that roof, because I'm sure at the time when this was painted, this was indigo. There was no synthetic blue dye at that time. They also, because we made the finest muslins in India, they cut the thumbs of the master weavers so they could not weave and they could not teach the next generation. And so Gandhi said, we may not come and we will be free. Now, in this land, where we created freedom through cotton, Monsanto took over the cotton seed. 95% of all cotton seed to date is owned and controlled by Monsanto, which has bought up 60. Not bought up, they locked them in licensing arrangement. That's the other interesting thing about mafia capitalism or capitalist mafia, is you have no responsibility. You don't have to take care of anything, but you have all absolute rights. So 60 companies can only sell Monsanto's cotton. The government research cannot do any breeding. They've stopped. Farmers' own seed has been destroyed by all kinds of mechanisms which I won't go into deeply. Now why does Monsanto want to buy or sell seeds? Because they collect a royalty. Again, they don't have to do any work. Centuries of breeding gave cotton. The Indian companies do all the work of multiplying the seed, including the genetically engineered traits. Monsanto sits in Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, and collects rents like the mafia collects rents. Doesn't have to do anything, they never have to. Mafia never works. But they harvest the rewards of other people's work through coercion and terror. That's exactly what's happening in these areas where first they get the farmer locked into these seeds, destroy the options, collect a royalty which is so high that every year 200 million dollars of royalty are going from the poor Indian peasant. How does the Indian peasant pay them for this when they don't have the money? They borrow, they get into debt, and when they can't pay back their debt, they end their lives by drinking pesticide. 270,000 Indian farmers have committed suicide, largely in the cotton belts of India, in four states where cotton is grown and most of it has been to cotton. And if you make a map of the suicides and the cotton, it's the same map. As I mentioned, 95% of this is now BT cotton. How does the mafia work? These companies have their agents, in, not in individual villages, but in small little towns, where the men will go for a drink or a smoke. The women work hard at home. So when, as long as women looked after the seed, everything was fine. Because if you're seed, you don't get into debt. The husband goes, has never dealt with seed in his life because the women were the seed experts. And after a few drinks, he's told, you'll be a millionaire. You'll be a millionaire, just take this new seed, put your thumbprint on this paper, mortgage your land. Now, with the advertisements, a little bit of videos, etc., the farmer gets into debt. Not ever imagining that a lie could be told to him because they've used the gods to do the same. They've used sacred texts in advertising. And farmers who've never been failed by seed or their gods actually think I will earn lots. This will have 1,500 kilograms per acre. The seed fails. Another round is taken on credit, another round. Next year again, next year again. Meantime, in this globalized system, something that's also happening here in Italy 
the value of what the farmer is producing constantly goes down. The farmer keeps working harder and harder, but the cotton gets cheaper. The corn gets cheaper. The farmer doesn't earn enough. Within three years, two years, the farmer is in such deep debt to the same people who sold him the seeds and the chemicals, who now come in a very mafia tactic. Your land is mine, and if by tomorrow you haven't paid back, I'm coming to take your land. And because the farmers still have a deep bond in India to their land, for them it is still Mother Earth, the farmer will go quietly to his field. And this is the case in 95% of the suicides that we have observed. The farmer goes to the field quietly, takes, takes another credit, to buy a bottle of pesticide, drinks it, ends his life. It's only when the farmer's dead, someone finds the body, goes tells the widow that your husband is lying dead. This to me is a mafia of a new kind.